Hello guys, in this video, we'll start learning shift and sequencer instruction. In this video, we'll see what are bit and word shift instruction. And in the next video, we'll learn sequencer instruction and do a simple project. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content I have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, shift and sequencer instruction are placed here. Let's start with BSL and BSR instructions. The BSR is a short form of bit shift write. This instruction needs a word address. For example B3 colon 0. The address must start with a sharp sign. It means the inserted address is important, not its stored value. As you know, the B3 colon 0 address refers here. Then we need an address of the control data table. The status bits of the control word are enable, done, error, unload, and so on. If you remember we have explained the done and enable bit for timers and counters. These status bits work similarly. With these bits, the state of the BSR instruction can be understood. For example, the LEN memory stores the length number of the BSR instruction. Here, I must write a bit address, which its state is important. For example I0 slash 1 address. That's the second digital input. Finally, I must write a positive integer number. For example 20. I will explain it later. Now let me use an open contact to enable and disable the BSR instruction. Now, let's test this simple program on my computer, to understand how the BSR instruction works. Well, let me open the binary and input data tables. Pay attention, here, I referred to the B3 colon 0 address. Then, I assigned number 20, as the length parameter. So I select the first 20 bits, from the first bit of the B3 colon 0. There are 16 bits in the B3 colon 0 word, so the BSR instruction needs the first 4 bits of the next binary word too. These 20 bits will be used by the BSR instruction. Based on the program, the inserted BSR instruction can be activated by the first digital input. By each activation, the state of the I0 slash 1 will be copied to the 20th bit. By the next activation, all 20 bits will be shifted to the right and the state of the second digital input will be copied to the 20th bit again. Now, let me change this bit to 0. At this time, all 20 bits are shifted to the right side, and the number 0 has been copied to the 20th bit. Now, pay attention to the state of this bit, which will be copied and shifted on 20 bits of memory, by each activation. As you see, the selected 20 are shifted to the right side too.
All right, I hope you have learned how the BSR instruction works. The BSL instruction works similarly, but it will copy the selected bit state to the first bit and then shift all selected bits to the left side. Now, let's explain what are FFL and FFU instructions. The LFL and LFU instructions work similarly. Let me insert an FFL instruction. FFL is a short form of first input first output load. This instruction needs a word addresses as its source. Let me use the N7 colon 10 address. I must write a word address here. Similarly, the sharp sign means the inserted address is more important than its stored value. Also, this instruction needs to use an address of the control data file. Finally, let me write number 6 as the length parameter. We will see, this contact will be used to load data. So, let me define a suitable symbol for its address. Beside the FFL to load data, the FFU instruction is using to unload data. So, let me use the FFU instruction in the second rung. Pay attention to the FFL and FFU difference. Here, I use another word address, N7 colon 11, as the destination. As you see, all parameters of the inserted FFL and FFU are similar, except the source and destination addresses. Pay attention, in both of them, I have used the N7 colon 0 addresses and number 6, as their FIFO and length parameters respectively. So, these 6 addresses will be important in this program. The FFL instruction will load the N7 colon 10 values onto selected addresses and the FFU instruction will unload data from 6 selected addresses to the N7 colon 11 address. Alright, let's test the program. Well, let me open the integer and input data tables. All right, let's enable the FFL instruction. As you see, the source value was loaded to the first address, N7 colon 0. Let me change the source value, and activate the FFL instruction again. The new value was loaded to the second address, N7 colon 1. Let's change the source value and activate the FFL instruction again. 
As you see, the source value was copied to the third address. I can continue loading data until all six selected addresses will be used. After that, the FFL won't work. Now, all selected addresses have been used. So, the FFL instruction won't able to load data. Now, let's enable the FFU instruction. This instruction unloads data to the destination address, and 7 colon 11. Note that, the FFL and FFU work inversely. This the first number, which has been loaded first. And, this the second number which has been loaded before. Alright, this slide shows how the FFL and FFU work. By the FFL, data can be loaded here, which usually is called stack, and by the FFU, data can be unloaded from the stack memory. The source address determines this place. This address determines the first location of the stack memory. And the length parameter determines the number of elements in stack memory. The FFL and FFU parameters are similar together, but its destination address determines this place. So, the FFL loads data to the stack memory, and the FFU unloads them from the stack. Pay attention, the first input data will be the first output data. Similarly, the LFL instruction can load data on the stack memory. And the LFU unloads them from the stack. Pay attention, for these instructions, the last input data, will be the first output data. Alright, the LFL and LFU instruction can be inserted from here. In the next video, we'll learn what are sequencer instructions, and also we'll do a simple project with shift and sequencer instruction. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.